All right, good morning, guys. Uh, Jimmy Angeles again with FKK. Um, this is our chapter number three. Um, very happy about having our guest today uh, because it's a D3 panel and um, quality coaches that we invited for this for this um, Q and A. Um, and I would like to introduce him um, at this time. Um, number one, we have uh, Coach Cliff Jordan from Huntington, and also Coach Tim from Piedmont. So, um, unfor unfortunately, Coach Teller was supposed to be with us. Um, he was called um, last night to have a baby, so uh, we're not going to bother him at the hospital at this point. <laughs> um, but we wish him the best. Um, first of all, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, hopefully, this will be some another another option for our players and our parents to uh, learn a little bit more about Division Three. And um, what better to ask the same the coaches that. Um, to give us that information, okay? So let's start with the first one. Um, what is your opinion about FKK, the staff, the teams, um, the membership? Um, what is your opinion about that? Let's start with Coach Cliff. Uh, my opinion about FKK, and I actually really enjoy it, is that you guys think outside the box. You know, you're not a cookie cutter club. Um, you invite all levels. And what we really like about both your coaches and the players is they're very open to the idea of, of the D3 way. You know, not everyone ha is shooting for the stars going D1. You are all about getting everybody at a healthy level and, and enjoying enjoying their college experience. Perfect. Coach Tim, do you want to give us a little bit of input about that? Yeah, I think I, I would echo uh, Coach's comments in really the way that the, the program has gone about as far as placing kids at the right program, especially. Um, but being a, a good steward of the kids that are, in your, that are in your club is a really key factor, I feel like, for any DOC across the country. Um, and in our experience and working with FKK, they've done an amazing job, um, both coaches and players really, of taking a look at what the fit is like in the program um, and trying to make sure that they go somewhere where, where that program wants them um, rather than just where they want to go. I think that matters a great deal in the recruiting process, especially as in, a, in a very technologically filled age as we are right now. Great. Um, let's talk about the difference in between the levels. Can you guys explain a little bit about um, what the difference are, um, maybe finances. Um, what is the difference between a D1, D2 versus an NAIA, a D3, and, and a JUCO? Like, what, what are the difference a little bit as far as finances goes? Coach Tim, do you want to start with that? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, in Division Three is considered a non-athletic scholarship division. Um, the, the major difference, though it exists in the scholarship aspect from athletics perspective, um, also you have to understand that Division Three offers a great deal of academic scholarship. Um, so I think, you know, the difference, of course, considerably um, that is normally thought of is the level. And I think that everyone talks a good bit about there are good and bad Division I, Division II, and Division Three teams. Uh, and you have to do the research as a student athlete in order to figure out what you're looking for. Um, and I think when I went through the process as a student athlete, that was something I, I learned quite quickly was just that I needed to look at the entirety of the program not necessarily just the level. And it was something I didn't understand at the very beginning of the process as a student athlete, uh, looking for my own program when I was going through the process. And then of course, NAI is separate from the NCAA, uh, which houses division three, II, division one, II, division two, uh, but the NAIA is an athletic scholarship uh, program as well too. So a lot of it comes down to your research as a student and making sure that you find the proper program that fits you. Uh, I think that one of the things that co kids can get caught up in too much is that they have an athletic scholarship, but if it's only a 5% athletic scholarship, it may not make that much of a difference to your bottom line as far as what you're paying year to year. Um, and I think the average would be an average scholarship uh, for a young lady looking for a women's soccer scholarship, uh, and that extends all the way up to Division One. You know, there's a little bit of a, a false uh, idea of what a full scholarship would be, um, and there's not a lot of those floating around um, at that level even as well, too. So understanding that the bottom line cost is really what mom and dad are going to be concerned with um, and what you as a student athlete can be looking towards as well. And I think involving your parents or guardian um, because they're going to have a pretty keen sense of the financial picture um, and allow you to kind of avoid mistakes that you may make uh, as a young kid. That's great. Thank you so much. That's, that's a great, great um, way to answer that. Coach Cliff, would you mind talking about um, packages, scholarships? How do they work? How does that work? at a D3 level? 
what's what's great about D3 level is that we, you know, we're, we're, we care about the, the academic portion. And what that means is that, you know, ACT, SAT comes into play, your GPA, the classes you've taken, what classes are, are, are accepted. Um, some schools accept outside or in-state um, aid as well. Uh, it comes down to, with the packages, one, what is that school willing to, to give a particular student athlete in terms of those GPA, ACT, SAT scores? Um, are they able to super score? Uh, and what really the packages come out to, to make it work, and, and sometimes they can stack, which means that, you know, you can be offered A, B, and C scholarship onto to room and board or onto uh, tuition. Others are, hey, here's the, the flat line. And so you, that's something you really have to investigate is, is this going to be all one bill or is this going to be a stacked bill or even a stacked scholarship? Okay. Great. Recruiting process. What is the recruiting process for a player that is interested in Division III? Um, the communication. What is the expectation from a coach um, to um, approach those players? Like, what, you know, the, the, the question in reality is, like, what is your recruiting process at a D3 level? Is it separate from a D2? Is it separate from a D1? Um, and how do you like for the player to communicate with you? Uh, Coach Tim, let's start with you. Yeah, sure. I think um, the recruiting process in our, in our country at all levels has changed so greatly uh, since I've been involved in the college. It's very rare for us to receive contact from a younger player in high school. Uh, and now it's extremely common. I think it's being encouraged across youth soccer uh, to reach out earlier and earlier. Um, I think one of the things to be aware of in Division 1, 2, and 3 are restrictions on when um, contact can occur. Um, and they vary, of course, by each division. That's something that each student athlete has to make sure they do their research on so that when they're contacting each school, they know when to expect time. You know, for us, we try to do as much as possible, like every other program in the country, um, in maintaining good relationships and contacts with recruits. But to be completely honest, it's really on you as a student athlete um, as far as keeping up the contact. Uh, if you rely on coaches to keep up the contact with you and always check and see if you're still interested in their program, um, quite honestly, they probably won't be interested in you as much uh, because you're in the driver's seat of this process. Um, and I think a lot of coaches, you be the one to start the process, be the one to be interested through the process, and be genuine through the process as well, too. Um, I think that would be a good expectation from a student athlete to have from a coach um, in the idea of being genuine. And that really starts with you as a student athlete. Um, so avoid the idea of sending out 200 emails to coaches all across the country. Um, you know, do your research, narrow down your focus and pick out your schools. And if coaches and schools aren't contacting you, contact rules may prohibit that. Uh, but if you're getting closer and closer towards your graduation date and you still haven't heard from that one school that you want to attend, um, it goes back to that rule that I kind of put into place earlier of go where you're wanted rather than where you want to go. Uh, because often it ends up being a really good match. Um, and there's always a plan behind the process to be allowing you to find the right opportunity to be able to play your college soccer. And that's really the goal too as well in the recruiting process is um, when you focus on a program, focus on a program where you feel like you have a very good chance at making an impact. Um, that's what a lot of coaches really want across the country. Um, and I think that's what really is it's pretty key in the process. So I know it starts very young um, for a lot of kids and that's fine. But I also think too, hey, you have time to make your decision. So go through your process. Everybody's process is individual and completely different from, from, from others. Um, so on time in your life as a student athlete, um, and you don't get that opportunity often. So I would say enjoy the process as much as possible. Uh, Coach Cliff, could you give us a little bit of an example of communication? Like what would you like to be, um, like when you receive these emails from players or, or communication from players, could you give us a little bit of an example of what would you expect? Uh, on the emails, we definitely want to know um, your GPA, and any ACT or SATs if you've taken them. Definitely have the right contact. And you'll be hearing from us soon, you know, either via text message, response, email, even a phone call, uh, including even a clip to if you have any highlight film. Definitely include that in your first correspondence. Um, you know, don't expect that we've already seen you fly. Uh, that, is, that is very critical in terms of text messaging. You know, we, a response would be, would be good. You know, we do want to know early on if you are interested, if you've done your research what research you've done, um, what are some interests that in terms of continuing, because we don't want to be bombarding you. You know, we, we don't want to be keep, uh, keep texting you uh, to where you're just like, you know, hey, here's this coach again texting me or calling me and I'm not interested. You know, we want open, honest communication. 
Great. Now with this uh, coronavirus, you know, going out and unable to actually communicate and, and go out and practice and watch and play, um, attend to, you know, um, ID camps and showcases, um, what it will be, you think, the best process for our players? Um, do you want to continue to communicate via email, uh, film? What, what is your take on that, Coach Cliff? My take is, especially with everything shutting down around us, um, film, film would be good if, if they have it. Um, if not, your coach's contact information, that would be very critical, um, especially with all the relationship, relationships we all have as coaches. Um, we, can, we can easily pick up the phone, and that coach will be honest with us in terms of if that player would be a good fit. Um, recruiting, we're going to be in texting all areas of electronic engagement right now. Okay. Well, I'm assuming that obviously you contact their coaches. You contact, yep. you know, their reference, correct? That's, that's, that's an important piece of uh, communication to give it to our players. Uh, Coach Tim, what does it take for a player to be recruited? That's a good question, I think. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Uh, I think it's different amongst all programs across the country as far as what they're maybe looking for. Um, I think the hardest thing as a prospective student athlete in, recruit, in the recruiting process is trying to find the one thing that's going to appeal to coaches that they're trying to contact all across the country because everybody's looking for something so different. Um, you know, I think really honestly what it takes is an ethic to where you're not going to give up on the process. Um, and continuing to send information and contact and communication, keep sending schedules out, um, put yourself out there to be able to be having the exposure that you need to be able to be seen. Um, I think that's one of the, in that they provide a lot of opportunities um, where you're able to get seen by that one coach that you want to get seen by um, or one program or whatever that may be uh, to be able to get your opportunity to play where maybe you would want to play. Um, the exposure is the biggest key and being ready at all times when that exposure comes. Uh, too often we've heard those stories, I think as college coaches, um, of kids who have contacted them over and over again and the, the time where, where they've actually been able to work it out to see ready um, is really more the key. And I think that's a big part of the recruiting process because it's, it's kind of like the idea of you only get one chance to make a first impression. Um, and so I think as a, as a player, you need to do what you need to do to be able to make sure you're prepared at all times to be able to play well. Um, and show well so that when you get the exposure, you're ready for that opportunity and you show well in front of the coaches that you want to be seen by. Um, you know, in addition to that, you always, when it comes to academics, um, how you act, of course, when you're in communication with that coach um, is very key, um, whether it be text message, phone call, or email, as Coach Cliff was saying. Um, you know, your communication and how you operate in that process is extremely key for us of whether knowing that we're going to get a really good player when it comes to off the field as well, too. And I think that's such an important part of the recruiting process, especially. And then, of course, too, as well, when you take your campus visit, how do you interact with your family and your parents? Um, that can maybe make a big difference to a lot of coaches um, who are looking for someone who's looking for a family culture and environment, um, like so many of us college coaches are. Um, so it, it really takes an, an ability and an attitude of, of not quitting and continuing to work hard um, and outlasting a lot of your competition, which is really what a lot of college athletics is about is that surviving and advancing. Okay. So with that being said, at what age do you think is the proper age to be recruited or to start this recruiting process? Uh, Coach Cliff? Identify, um, not really engage, but the sophomore years when we're just really saying, all right, what is, who is, who's starting to get comfortable uh, to, to excel at the next level. Junior, senior years when we're really starting, starting to engage. Um, it comes down to, you know, who, you know, in terms of how do you interact on, in the game as well? You know, how are you to your parents after the game? Uh, how are you to your coaches during a game and after a game? That is definitely very big. I've seen many, many interesting interactions throughout that we've, we've canceled on, on some players because of their interactions with their coaching staff. Um, it comes down to really, really uh, engaging early on and to see if, if we can get you on a visit. You know, if we can get you engaged with our staff, with our players, and see if you'd be a good fit, you know, with, with the team and communication-wise. Okay, last two questions. Um, let's go with the first one. Um, do I have, um, what is it, what do I have in order for me to realize what level do I, can I play on? Um, so one of the questions that we received was, um, if you can kind of describe um, for a player what level they can play on. Uh, will you be able to answer that one? I think that one was a that tough question, but uh, Coach Tim, let's start with you. 
Sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough question because every every kid's process is so different when you go through. Um, so every prospective student athlete's going to have a different to know what level you belong at. You have to put yourself out there and expose yourself to different camps and different levels. Um, I would say don't be don't be shying away from any opportunity, whether if you feel like you're a good D3 fit or if you feel like you're a good D1 fit, go and experience the, the camps and the, the levels of, of those other programs. Um, you'll get a pretty good feel pretty quickly um, of where you fit in that level if you're honest with yourself, especially. Um, and most of the players that we can have a pretty good idea of the level of where they fit. Um, I think because a lot of the information that has come out over the last 10, 15 years, um, you know, with the technology that we now have at our fingertips allows us to be able to get a little bit more of a feel for what that level of the program is like. Um, you know, I think communication with coaches as well, too, once you've played in front of them enough times. Um, and that means, of course, you know, one time is probably not enough. Um, so maybe getting in an environment where um, you have enough exposure with that program where they've seen you play for your club um, or seen you play at different showcases as well as going to their camp, which is a pretty key part of the process, quite honestly. Um, it allows more information to be out there about you and they have a little bit more of a clearer picture of who you are, um, whether or not you would fit at the level. And, and most coaches are going to be pretty honest with you about that um, because they want players who fit their program. Um, so I think putting yourself in as many situations as possible that once you go and compete in that challenge, if you don't feel like you fit at that level, find the level that fits you. And that may not necessarily be a division one, two, or three level. Um, you know, finding really good programs and, and programs where you feel like maybe you're able to compete a little bit earlier in, in the process, going to those camps and getting in front of those coaches, you may find the right fit uh, for you based on that, whether it's division one, two, three, or NAI or junior college. Um, you know, you're doing as much as possible to put yourself out there and getting as much exposure um, as a as a prospective student athlete. That's a great, a great answer. Um, okay, let's talk about um, ECNL. Um, Coach Cliff did say, "Take you can you only do you only recruit ECNL players?" That's one of the questions we received. No, and I think there's misconception that only ECNL gets recruited. And, and like uh, Coach Timmy said, is that it's about exposure. You know, ECNL is very out there with exposure. It frees recruit at all levels. Um, you don't just have to be a certain level to be a, a college athlete. There's college-level college level athletes at all at all stages of the game. That's great. And last of our final question, this will be mine. Um, I would like to hear from both of you. Um, how do you think our, our recruiting process go? I, I work with both of you guys very closely with our players. Um, and I would like to hear your opinion about um, our recruiting process within the club. Uh, Coach Tim, let's start with you. Well, Coach Jimmy, I, I don't have anything but good things to say. I'll tell you that. Uh, our work with you has been fantastic. We truly appreciate the opportunity that you've given us uh, to get on a stage like this, as well as throughout the entire time that we've worked with you in the process. I think players have to understand just how key that is uh, to have your club coaches and have your club involved in the recruiting process. It makes it so much easier um, for us to be able to get a pretty good idea of where a player is and where how they might fit within our, our program. Uh, FKK has done a wonderful job uh, over the years with that as well, too, specifically um, with so many players that have come into programs where even we've competed against, and I thought that's a really good fit for their program. Um, so you guys are doing a wonderful job, um, and we really appreciate the opportunity, of course, uh, to have the time as well as the, uh, the quite honestly, the exposure, um, as we talked about with respect to student athletes, but for our programs is so key as well, too. Um, and we've really, really enjoyed our, our operation. Especially engaging at all levels. Um, like, you, like you said, Timmy, it is about, about the players being happy. You see a lot of players coming from FKK staying at all, all the programs they attend for four years because they found the right fit. Um, and FKK, you know, and Coach, Coach Jimmy does a very good job as well as engaging us all. You know, we all are able to, to stay connected, to stay engaged, and, and he, he puts players at great levels. Great. Well, thank you so much again, guys. I appreciate the time that you guys have given us. You have no idea how much value this brings, uh, how many answers um, you've given to our, our membership. So this is great. Um, thank you so much. I hope that you guys are safe, that your families are safe and healthy. Uh, we wish you guys the best. Um, and thanks again for, uh, for always being supportive of our club and, and our players. Um, the best luck to you, all of you. I hope, uh, I hope that, you know, this changes and we won't be able to do this and we'll be able to <laughs> shake our hands and hug each other once in a while. Um, but um, again, thank you so much for, for all you do. All right. Um, I will see you guys for the next one. Take care. Thanks, thanks for having us. Stay safe.